Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm back here at Team Toyota of Princeton to check out this brand new 2023 Toyota Camry LE in pre-dawn gray mica. The LE now is the entry-level trim in the Camry lineup for 2023. So if you're looking for a mid-size sedan, but you don't want to spend big dollars, you want to spend less than 30,000 on a vehicle, then maybe this Camry LE will bring enough value for you for you to pull the trigger. So we'll check this out, see what it's bringing to the market. So let's dig in. The front end of this Camry, loving this pre-dawn gray mica paint, especially with your gloss black grill Toyota badge on the center cap. Like the design. Now the bottom portion of the grill is open down around the bottom of the license plate area. And then the design goes into the sides here. So this doesn't look as much as a fake vent, but as a continuation of the grill coming across. So I think that's a sharp looking design. And then we have the brushed aluminum that goes around it. So I think that's a very nice way to do that front end setup. Let me know what you guys think, but we're looking at LED headlights, LED daytime running lamps and standard bulbs for turn signals. So on your entry level camera, you're getting LED headlights up front. And I think that's a good move by Toyota. Wheel and tire package on the entry level camera. Uh, Camry LE is a 17 inch silver wheel, standard brake and rotor package, Toyota badge on the center cap, looking just fine for an entry level trim. Now these 17 inch wheels are wrapped in Michelin Energy Saver all season tires, 215 on the width, a 55 series sidewall, 17s, all four corners. This vehicle is front wheel drive but you can also get the entry-level LE trim and all-wheel drive if you would like. Just cost you a little bit more dough. Full side profile on the Camry. For an older design, it's still a good-looking car. I like this pre-dawn gray mica color looking good. We have the chrome all the way around the windows. They tie in with the silver wheels, so I think that works. Like that hard body line going right through the door handles. Makes it look really sharp, nice crease to it and it dives right back in over the top of the fuel filler and into the tail lights. Really makes it look nice. Really like the, this version of the Camry uh, as far as the exterior design. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Moving in closer, we're all painted around the wheel wells. Makes sense. We do have the splash guards that are an option on this vehicle. We are color matched on the side view mirrors. Color matched on the front and rear door handles. We have a left side fuel filler cap. Up top on the roof, we are color matched with shark fin antenna, and there is no moonroof in the LE Camry. All right, the rear of the Camry. Nothing to write home about on this entry level trim, but we, have, but we do have this nice kick up on the deck lid, which I like. No spoiler, but it does flare up a little bit, makes it look nice. Chrome Toyota badge, Camry underneath, LE on the bottom right of the trunk area, standard lighting in the back with turn signals. And then we're color matched all the way down until you get to the flat black down around the exhaust, which is coming out the right side of the vehicle. All right, we're under the hood of this 2023 Camry LE. And what are we looking at for a power plant? We have a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four cylinder engine mated to an eight speed automatic transmission, 203 horsepower, 184 pound feet of torque, MPGs, 28 in the city, 39 on the highway, 32 combined. The engine's minimum octane rating is 87, so you can run this on regular unleaded gas. All right, before we get into the interior of this Camry LE, you're going to want to know, Mike, you told me you can get it underneath 30 grand. How much under 30 and what am I going to get for my money here on this Camry LE? Well, the Camry LE sedan for 2023 Base price before options, $26,320. Now, this vehicle has some options. So we're going to add in $299 for your all-weather floor liners and cargo tray, an extra $129 for the door edge guards, an extra $69 for the rear bumper application, an extra $129 for the mud guards, and an extra $75 for the wheel locks. Then we need to add in destination and delivery of $1,095 from Toyota's Georgetown, Kentucky assembly plant, and your total 
MSRP for this vehicle from the factory is $28,116. Let's check out the interior. Starting with the footbox, nice large dead pedal brake and accelerator. Your carpeted, or excuse me, all season floor mats, I believe, are in the trunk, still in the box. And then we come to our seats. Now, for the driver's seat, you get power driver's seat with lumbar, which is a nice touch. Front passenger is going to be manual assist only. And then you get this gray, two-tone gray cloth interior with some gray stitching. Looks nice. Headrests are nice. For an entry-level uh, interior, it looks pretty good. Door panels, soft touch up top. Brushed aluminum trim right into the door handle. That nice two-tone lighter gray on the Armrest of the door, semi-soft, flat black on the switch gear, looking good. Standard sound system in here, no upgrade, six speakers. Up top on the dash, we have more soft touch. We do have some piano gloss black plastic, and then we have more of the silver trim, more of this light gray, and then down below here, we have a nice large glove box. All right, your infotainment system is going to be base because we're in the base LE, right? So we have the base 7-inch Toyota infotainment system. All the nav will be coming through your phone. It is Apple CarPlay Android Auto compatible, which usually means that is wired. Not the end of the world. We have an area where you can Bluetooth your phone. You can go back to home. You got your music right here, which you can dial in on your music right here. And you, so no problem there. You get your station list and all that other good jazz in here. So they got you covered as far as that goes. Go to menu or go back to home. It is a touch screen. You can project your phone. You can go to info. You can go to your apps. And there's your Wi-Fi hotspot. So overall, it's a pretty easy system to use. And when you're hooked up using your CarPlay or Android Auto, all your maps and your navigation will come through your phone. And that's that. And frankly, in a base model, you can't ask much more than that. We got hard controls here for our volume and tuning as well. We go to reverse. Backup camera is nice and clear. I'd like to see some trajectory though that would be nice but it is nice and clear so you can see where you're going when you're backing up down below we have four-way hazards two heat and air vents underneath that dual climate which is a nice touch and you can adjust it with these knobs nice and easy sync them together so that's a nice touch we have manual controls here for where you want the air to go and your fan speed here's your front and rear defrost on the left and on the right so they got you covered there down below here you got USB-A and a 12 volt. So they got you covered there. Then you have an area to lie your phone in, no wireless charging. We're on the LE trim, so that's not surprising, but you can move this up. Now you got a little storage, secret storage compartment down there for your secret papers, always like that. Now we can close it back up. Here's the gear shift that's gonna take you through the eight speed automatic transmission. Love the fact that this has got a regular automatic and not a CVT. Here's our drive modes, eco, sport, and normal. And they're all buttons right here on your center console. Two cup, cup holders right here, no problem at all, with some brushed aluminum trim to lift it up a little bit. And then of course we have our Toyota key which is a standard key, no push button start in the LE. You got to put the key into the ignition barrel, but you do have lock, unlock, pop the trunk and your panic button here on this Toyota key, but it is a regular key, but on an entry level trim, you really can't expect a push button start. Center armrest, semi-soft, open it on up. Really nice area for storage. And then in here, we have a USB-A and a USB-C. So they got you covered for connectivity with A's and C's. That's good. Toyota steering wheel. It's a soft touch steering wheel, but I like the 10 and 2 notches. I like how they dressed it up a little bit with your chrome Toyota badge and some brushed aluminum trim to lift it on up. It's a round bottom wheel. So it's going to be a little bit tough in this cockpit to get in and out, depending on how tall you are. I'm 5 foot 11 and my, my leg is going to scrape against the steering wheel to get in and out. Not the end of the world in an entry level car, but it is there. On, we have flat black on our switch gear. We have telephone and voice commands on the left. Then we have an area here where you can control that small uh, digital display on the dash. And then on the right, you have your cruise control, safety suite controls, modes for your infotainment system, and to handle your music right there. On the stocks, we have controls for our headlights and windshield wipers. Down below here, you have your adaptive high beams, traction control off, 
pop the trunk and open up your fuel filler door. As far as the wheel goes, we have a manual tilting, Let's see if I can get this, tilting, a little stiff, and telescoping wheel. So they got you covered there. And then we go to our dash setup, and we have an analog digital combo, analog gauges for your speedometer, tachometer, fuel level, and coolant temperature. And then you can go through additional information here on the small digital display in the center. And each one of these has some submenus for you. So they got you covered here in this Camry as far as that goes. And it's nice and easy to use. Now, when we're taking a look at our uh, drive modes, we have Eco, and then the Eco light comes on down below, as you can see in green. Go back to normal, everything turns off, and then we can go to Sport, and a little green Sport light comes on, and the top of it goes red. And then, of course, the top of the screen is blue when you're normal, and Eco, you don't get green. So you get red on top of that little digital dash for, for Sport, you get blue for normal, but when you go to Eco, it doesn't turn green. That's strange. I guess it is what it is. We'll t dr take this out for a drive in normal today. No point in doing sport, but it's a nice and easy to use uh, dash setup. Overhead console, big area for your sunglasses right there. LED interior lighting, which is nice. You just pop them on and off. Looks good. SOS button in the middle in case you have an emergency on the road. I like the fact we have LED interior lighting on an entry level LED trim. No moonroof, so nothing to show you there. Standard rear view mirror on our sun visor with vanity and an LED light. And you take, open this up and you have an extension to block out the side sun. Getting in the back seat of the Camry, I have the seat set for my driving position, so I'll just climb on in. No problem with the head getting in. Sitting in the back, five foot 11, enough room for my knees, plenty of room, plenty of headroom, plenty of shoulder width room. Cloth all the way down, no seat pocket behind the driver, but we do have seat pocket behind the front passenger. And here you just have an area for storage, no heat and air vents back here whatsoever, and no connectivity. So you're in the back, you need to use the plug in for your phone that's inside that center console. And then the rear uh, doors, same as the front. If we're look, taking a look at it, there's the front door panel looking good. Here's the back door panel looking the same. And the use of materials on the back door panel are the same as the front. So no cost cutting on the door panel in this entry level car by Toyota, which I think is good. Rear seats, nice and comfortable, same cloth, same two-tone gray design. Not a problem, soft headrests, looking good. And then we have a center armrest, super soft, two cup holders. Thank you for the center armrest. I don't know how many entry level sedans I see or entry level SUVs I see that have no armrest in the back. So thank you Toyota for putting one in the Camry LE. But it's very comfortable back here in this LED Camry to sit back and relax. All right, we pop the trunk from the dash. It pops right open so you can get right to it. It's really a nice large trunk area here in this Camry. 15.1 cubic feet of cargo space in the trunk of the Camry. That is really, really good. Here's these floor mats. These are the all-weather floor mats still in the box. Here's the all-weather cargo mat that says Camry on it. Lift that up. Lift this up. There's a jack, which means we got a spare underneath that. So thank you, Toyota, for the spare. But a good amount of back space here in the back of the Camry. Again, 15.1 cubic feet. We got some tie downs on either side as well, in case you don't want things sliding around. And if you need more room and you don't have any rear seat passengers, you have these pull levers. You just pull these, and then you walk around to either side of the car. And you can pull the rear seats down, 60-40 split, 40 on the left, 60 on the right. And then you look in the back, there's a bit, bit of a kick up, but if you need extra space, you got it with those rear folding seats. So that's a nice touch as well. And here's that rear bumper application I told you about. Nice and clear, says Camry on it. I think it looks really nice for a rear plastic strip on the back to protect the paint from when you're unloading and unloading, but a good, real good use of space in the back of this Camry by Toyota. All right, here's our Toyota window sticker. We'll zoom on in to give you the lowdown on this Camry LE in pre-dawn gray mica, Georgetown, Kentucky. Fuel economy estimates. 
standard and optional equipment. Standard on the left, options on the right. And your total MSRP. Let's take her out for a spin. All right, we are hitting the jug handle here in Jersey. We're out on the road with this 2023 Camry LE, front wheel drive, totally base. Like I said, you can get an LE in all wheel drive for a little extra cash if you want the all wheel drive. I'd probably go that route, live it in the Northeast for winter time. But plenty of visibility, visibility out the windshield side glass side view mirrors rear glass no problem at all no sweat we do have some safety technology in here with the lane keep assist steering assist lane centering is active the steering assist is active uh, however i'm not seeing any blind spot monitoring on either mirror on this camry so it doesn't look like we have blind spot monitoring going on in this Camry, which is too bad. I think every car should have that. But it feels really good. It's really well built. When you close the door, you really feel like you're snugged on in. No problem. The seats, even though they're just plain cloth seats with pretty loose bolstering, they feel pretty good. Not the greatest, but they feel pretty good. So I can't complain since I'm in a car at price to just over 28k uh drive wise suspension's well damped you can feel some bumps when you hit them but not bad steering gets the job done you know it's a little light you're not getting much feedback if and if any through the wheel not the end of the world in a car like this um, not at all not a problem See the 2.5 liter inline four is gonna be a little noisy out of the lower gears. So that's not the end of the world. When you're looking at this kind of money, you're getting a, a two and a half liter with the eight speed auto. I like that because a lot of cars, sedans that are in this price range are gonna have CVTs in them, not this one. Obviously, if you go Camry hybrid, you're, you're gonna get a CVT, but not in the gas powered one. And they're getting really good gas mileage out of this four banger. So that's a plus two. And it takes regular. That's a plus two. Nice smooth shifts out of this eight speed. It's just a really pleasant car to drive. And when you're looking at a car like this Camry, you're the, you know, the customer is gonna be the person who needs this car for either commuting, to and from work, to and from the train. If you're up here in the Northeast and you're taking the train into New York to work, uh, or you're just doing errands and you want something practical and uh, less expensive to do your daily errands or school runs or whatever it may be, so it's a point A to point B car. Nothing flashy, nothing exciting, but for what they're charging, you're getting a pretty darn good car. Plus, if you're if you like buying American, this is 100% made in the United States, all parts, all assembly in the United States, so it is classified as a dom domestic car, just so you know. Now we're going to do a emergency brake test in 3, 2, 1. Nice and straight, linear, no problem. And we take off. Mr. Maserati coming by, and it's a little noisy, as you can hear. But what are you gonna do? You can't get a V6 in an LE Camry. But it feels good, it feels good. And it's got enough power to get this car up and running, no problem, no problem. You're not gonna be wanting for power. And it just feels good underneath you. You know, you drive with confidence when you drive a Camry. And I still think, even though it's an older design, I still think it looks good. I still think it looks pretty fresh. Let me know what you guys think about that. Now, 
that little beep is my lane centering assist telling me I'm not centered in the lane. <laughs> you can turn that off if you don't want it on. All right, we're going to do a turning radius test now. According to the specs, we're looking at 18.7 feet in turning radius. Nobody's coming, so let's see what we can do. All right, yeah, it's a little wide for a sedan, but not bad. We're going to feather this in, take off, see how she does. Brand new engine, so we don't want to stand on it. Three, two, one. And then we're up to speed. No issues at all. You're not going to be wanting for power in this vehicle. Just a little bit noisy out of the early gears. And then once you uh, hit cruising speed, you ease off the gas pedal. It's quiet, everything quiets down. And it's a very quiet driveline after that. So it's just a good overall car, easy to drive. Gonna get you to where you wanna go. You got plenty of trunk space. Obviously it's not gonna handle well. <laughs> got a lot of roll there but that's not what this particular camera is for you want something more exhilarating you got to move up to the TRD or the SXE but in the LE you get a lot of value here you get your USB A USB C setup you get CarPlay Android Auto uh, dual climate you're not going to get heated or ventilated seats but you can't expect that in the car at this price point from Toyota so overall you're getting a, a pretty decent package for what you're paying here but let me know know what you guys think about this 2023 Camry LE is this a little bit too base for you are you going to want to jazz it up a little bit and move up higher on the trim lines or are you thinking about going somewhere else with your mid-size sedan money like to the Honda Accord or maybe moving on over to the Koreans and the Hyundai Sonata or Kia K5 let me know what you think in the comments below I'd love to hear from you but I want to thank Team Toyota of Princeton for allowing the channel access to this 2023 Toyota Camry LE for a review today I'd like to thank all of you for watching if you enjoyed this video please consider giving it a like Please also consider subscribing and turn on that notification bell so you'll never miss another Shabby's Rides video. And I'll see all of you on the rebound. Take care, everyone.